Hello there, my beautiful audience. My name is Jakob Hak. I'm your host, and I want you to meet someone. My name is Jem Oljai, and I've been making iOS applications since 2011, and I've been making music apps since early 2017. I had three eras since 2017. My first era was learning how to make music apps. I did some applications like keyboard, fretboard, the first iterations of the ARPBOT and chordboard. And my second era was how to make AUV3 apps. And I kind of get addicted to them. And I made like 15 MIDI plugins since then. And after late 2020, I made more pro-focused apps. Gem here makes MIDI buddies for the iOS music community. They're basically MIDI plugins that you can load and quickly get some MIDI stuff going on in your project. And the reason to why I love these apps so much is because they're not trying to do everything all at the same time. No, they're mostly focused on doing specific things in specific ways. Now, if you stick with this video, then you'll be hearing from Jem himself about his design philosophy and why he wants to make his apps this way. Now, back when I made the interview with him, he had about 15 apps out and now it's closer to 20 and that's just way too many to go through. And so I've decided to go through the ones that are my personal favorites. Alright, so I use these apps to basically sequence both software and hardware things. And I'm talking drum machines, I'm talking synthesizers, but yeah, mostly synths. And I mostly use Gems apps to add generative elements to my music. Sometimes I'll use a whole group of Gems apps just to make completely generative music. And when it comes to software and apps, I mostly run Gems apps inside AUM Audio Mixer. And the reason to why I'm doing that is because it's a platform that lends itself really well to experimentation and jamming and dubbing and things like that. It's an AUV3 host with a mixer-like interface with a MIDI system inside of it. With the right type of MIDI plugins and right type of instruments and effects, you can easily turn AUM into a modular synth or modular drum machine or modular anything you want. And in cases like that, I just love adding generative sequencers and things to get things going quickly. And Gems apps are just perfect for that. Now sticking with the software part, I do realize that this type of music making is not for everyone. And many of you might actually need to use some sort of a more conventional DAW with a timeline view, something like Cubasis or Logic Pro for iPad. And you can load Gems apps in DAWs like that too. I almost never do. I mostly use apps like this inside AUM, which is why you'll see AUM featured a lot in this video. But that's software wise, because I also do sequence external hardware such as drum machines, screw boxes and synthesizers. A little while ago, I was sent a box of goodies from CME. They basically make these MIDI dongles for USB MIDI and DIN5 MIDI. And this dongle in particular, I've been using it to send generative patches from Gems apps into hardware synthesizers like my Uno Synth Pro X and also my Duo 6A. <laughs> I 
I've had loads of fun sequencing stuff this way because the setup is minimal. It's so easy and I mean less cables required to do this stuff. How can you not love that? Binaryrhythmic is a binary sequencer. And so the amount of steps up here can be viewed as bits. It goes through the bits, turns notes on and off until it's gone through the entire sequence and then it starts over again. So it works very differently from other sequencers. There's one thing I want to show you, and that is in all of Gem's apps, you can go into settings and you can actually go down here where you will be able to find scale and key settings. And I want to show you something neat with all of this towards the end of the video, because there's actually an app that allows you to control the scales and keys in all of these apps from one place. If we head back to the main menu, we can see the amounts of bits or steps here. And on the side here to the left, we've got some options like note velocity, velocity variety, gate length. And looking further down, we even have logic options and random options. And I love the random a lot. Now, the way that you set things in here is by, if we go to notes, we just drag these sliders up and down to get the notes we want. If we wanted to set velocity, it's the same thing. And if you look down here to the right, we can find a pencil icon. Now, if we activate this, then we actually get to draw in our animations or notes or whatever we want to put in here. Almost all of Gem's apps are this easy to work with, which is why I love them so much, because they're highly focused. It's very, very easy to set them up and get stuff going quickly. Now down here, you also have a rate setting for the sequences. So if you want the sequence to run faster or slower than the actual BPM, you just use this rate knob down here to set it. And one thing more is you can actually make more patterns than the one you have in front of you. Down here to the left in the corner here, we have a plus sign. And this allows you to create more patterns and you can switch between them seamlessly. Music is always my hobby and my side hustle. I took some piano and guitar lessons when I was a kid and I've been playing guitar and piano since then. And music was always a big thing in my life and also programming. So I kind of merged my two big hobbies, making apps for iOS and making music. A few years later, I did get better and I just make full-time job out of it. I'm just living all of my app store paychecks. <laughs> Between 2011 and 2020, I never stopped working full time. I was always employed by some startups or some enterprise companies. 
And I kind of never was happy while working for some big companies or startups. I always wanted to make something matters for myself. And I think I'm good at making music apps and I love what I'm doing and I love making music apps. So I'm really happy I can make a living out of it. So I'm just going to make music apps. Now, when I started getting into modular synthesis and I started talking to other modular people, I was able to identify two modules that everyone either had or wanted to have. One of them is the Make Noise Mats, and the other one is the Turing Machine. Now, since it is open source, it's actually available on GitHub, a lot of people have been using this concept to make their own Turing-like machines. And if you've ever wondered if there is a MIDI Turing machine on iOS, then yes, that's what ShiftBud is. So how does it work? Well, it randomly generates notes from a set scale. Now in ShiftBud, we can find the scale settings here on the right side. And we also have settings for minimum octave and maximum octave. And let me just take this opportunity to say that the amount of scales in GEMS apps is staggeringly high. There's just an abundance of scales you normally do not find in other apps where you can select scales. Well, once you've selected the scale, we can head back to the main page where we have these three knobs. The first one is the rate knob, which is pretty straightforward. It sets the speed playback of the sequence, which is of course locked to the BPM of the plugin host and or DAW that you've got ShiftBud loaded in. The second knob sets the amount of steps you are working with within the sequencer. And the third one has three modes. You see, in the middle area, you can set the amount of chaos, the amount of randomness that notes are being generated with. However, if you end up hearing a bit of sequence that you like, you can quickly loop a part of that sequence by turning this knob all the way clockwise until it says loop. Now, what's dope about this is that if you end up getting tired by this loop, then you can just turn the knob counterclockwise back into the chaos area, have it do a new randomly generated sequence, and then you can loop it again. Now, I did say that the chaos knob had three functions, and it turns out that if you turn it all the way clockwise, then you get into a double looping mode, which basically expands on and doubles up the loop length. Yeah, I really love ShiftBud so much because it's so easy to add to a project and get something new and interesting happening in it. Making all the apps was very hard, so I had to start with the easier stuff. I did a music theory library. We call them library in programming language terms. The music theory is based on math, just uh, numbers. And if something is based on mathematics, you can program it on computers. So music theory was a very good starting point for me because it was just basic algorithms like scales, chords, intervals. So I made the base library and I built lots of apps top of it. 
Also, I open sourced my music theory library on GitHub so people can um, download it and build their own music apps as well. And lots of people did actually. So I kind of contributed back to the community. And also AudioKit was a big part of my application development because AudioKit has everything inside it and it's very easy to use. And the community is very nice people. We help each other a lot. So I also contributed to AudioKit as well. Yeah, it, uh, I took the easy path, but then I realized I'm never gonna out of ideas because there's no such thing like the perfect sequencer. You always want something different. So you will never run out of ideas for sequencing apps. Now, BounceBot is a very straightforward app, but it is a bit odd because, first of all, it was built inside a game engine. And if you connect a keyboard to it, well, you can kind of play Pong. So the way that this works is, even though it's laid out as some sort of a game, it's actually a random note generator. And the way that notes are being generated is by having these balls bounce around the court, hitting the side keyboards and also top and bottom keyboards. Now the scale for the keyboards are set globally and you do that from within the settings menu. So they will all work from the same key and same scale. However, if we look down here, we can see that for the top, bottom, left and right keyboards, we can set stuff like octave and velocity ranges. We can even set MIDI in and out channels and we can also select what notes are being played. Stop it. Bruh. Get some help. Going further down, you can see that under ball settings, we have collision with other balls. I suggest you turn this on because initially when you load bounce pod, this is turned off, meaning the balls will just simply pass through one another. Here you can also set the size variety and speed variety. And I do suggest that you increase these numbers. 15% just wasn't enough for me. I wanted more variety. And lastly, you also have color themes. And I love it when developers do this. I mean, it's a gimmick thing, but whenever I have this option, I actually do end up changing the color schemes in apps. Now, if we go back to the main page, there is a way for you to actually interact with these balls. You see, by tapping on them, you can have them change directions. Right, so if we look down here, we can control the ball count or amount of balls we have on the playing field with this knob here. We can set the overall speed for all of the balls over here, and we can set the size of the balls over here. And this actually matters because if a ball is big, then it won't be able to get in and hit the notes in the corners. I do have one critique, however, and I'm recording this on October the 17th, 2023. So whatever I say now is subject to change for the future and Gem might actually improve on this. When I load Bounce Spot, I often get CPU spikes and I think it is the nature of the app. It's been built inside a gaming engine and it has not been properly optimized for, well, what it's being used for right now. But even with that said, it is a favorite of mine and what I usually use Bounce Spot for is generating long notes slowly.
I'm kind of obsessed with simplicity. I don't like complex stuff. That's point one. And point two is I'm an engineer. <laughs> I'm not a designer. <laughs> and engineers usually not very good designers. <laughs> When you combine these two points, you can So I always use the same colors and system components, system fonts. Designing a simple app is hard. And another hard thing with the plugins is you can change the plugin window size, right? So you need to come up with a design that fits every size of window, every size of iPad screens, little screens like iPhone screens. So it's really hard to make a simple plugin design. So I'm usually using the scrollable components and I'm putting the important things in the middle of the screen. So usually my apps uh, look similar. Now, Cordbud 2, I can't even begin to tell you how much I love using this thing. I use it all the time whenever I'm making music within AUM. Why? Well, because it gives the user a very easy, straightforward way of adding chord progressions to your projects. It's especially helpful when you're out of ideas and you need some help with choosing some chords. You just select a scale, you press a chord by just pressing one of these little rectangles in here with a chord in it, and it gets added to the timeline. Now, once you have a chord inside the timeline, you can tap it and then you have many more alternatives. You can change the chord type, you can change the octave for the chord, and you can do inversions for it. of the time when I'm making music, I just want something that I can work quickly with. And that's what's so good about Chordbot 2, because it's not that busy in its interface. No, it's been streamlined for a quick workflow. Now, as with all of Gem's abs, you can also create more patterns. So if you have a chord progression you like, you can just simply go down here and press the plus sign and select that and go to the next pattern you want to make and do a new chord progression. And then by just tapping these two, you can switch seamlessly between them. And one last thing I want to mention is that you actually do have some editing settings. See, you can split chords if you select them and you go down here, you have delete, split, key and preview. So if you press split, it's going to give you an option between timings and then you can just split it up that way and move stuff around. So polarhythm. It's basically when you take two different rhythms and you play them at the same time. So you have the ability to create tracks and you have the ability to set the amount of steps in a track. So if we set this one to four and then we go to the plus sign and we add another track and here we change the rhythm or the step count to three and then we press the plus sign again and we set the step count to six. Now when we press play they'll all be locked to the tempo of the host that the plugin is loaded in. However they will all be playing different rhythms.
check this out. Not only can we do polyrhythms for notes, we can also do it for velocity, gate, ratcheting, probability, and random. We can have different steps for all of these things. And I love stuff like probability and random. These are very different from one another. Probability decides whether a note will be played or not. And random will actually just randomly play a note from within the selected scale. And you select the scales from within the settings menu. Now again, if you end up making a pattern that you really like, then you can keep on working by making more patterns. Just press the plus sign and add more stuff. Yeah, it's very quick to work with. And MIDI notes is not the only thing that Polybot can generate, because if we press the plus sign, we can see that we actually get an option between note and CC track. And so if we press add CC track, we first get to set which CC number we want to work with. And I want to work with number 20, so I'm going to type that in and then it gets added and here we can actually set modulation for a CC track. BrainBud is an app that looks like this. Once you've loaded it inside a host and you have other apps of Gem in there, you select it as an input for those other apps. And what BrainBud actually allows you to do is to switch out the key and scale in all apps at the same time. This is pretty dope because in BrainBud you can also create patterns and all of these patterns can have their own settings for scales and keys. And once you've got that set up, all you have to do is to tap a pattern. It will send out the signal to the other apps and change the scale and keys in those apps too. Yeah, so other than a global control for scales and keys in the other apps, BrainBot also has the ability to randomize stuff. And this can get pretty crazy. And let me tell you just straight up that this isn't perfect because very often when I switch out stuff, I'll end up getting clicks and pops and well, it's the nature of MIDI and switching things around instantly. And it can be pretty bad depending on what apps I'm using, how many voices are being played at that time. And yeah, I just want you to be aware of it. So use BrainBud with caution. Now, when I did my interview with Jem, we talked a lot about design philosophy, how hard or easy it is to design certain things a certain way, depending on what you're working with and what you're designing it for. And there was this one app that came to mind, and it's Euclid Goes to Party. And why did I come to think about it? Well, because it's a very specific app, and I think it's the only instrument app that Jem has ever made. All of his other apps has something to do with MIDI. So I asked him about it. So I was making techno music on my iPad, and I always had to load some kind of plugins, templates, and it was very time consuming. And when I'm done with the setup, I wasn't in the mood for making music. <laughs> because too much time on getting the stuff done, right? So I just want to make an app for that, just fire it up, and it's just gonna make the PWM sound with Euclidean seconds. And I just need a more gladder type of filter, some kind of simple envelope generator, and I'm done. So I did that for myself, then I released it as a product. I think it's very nice to have plugins like that. Very focused, saves a lot of time. It don't have effects, pages. You can load uh, your favorite delay or reverb and make your own sound out of it. I like the idea of plugins that's very easy to use. Text Quencer. If you've ever wondered what a movie quote would sound like, you can find out by just typing it into Text Quencer. It will basically just translate any text you type into it into melodic notes. And here's a little weird time consuming pro tip for you. You can map your own letters and keys, meaning you can have messed up messages doing awesome bass lines. <laughs> Yeah, 
it's a weird little thing that most of you probably won't be doing, but I'm a nerd. You know what? I, I won't even play these for you. Either way, it's a very straightforward app. All it does is it converts the letters into notes in a scale. And the scale, you can set that from within the settings menu, where you have key and scale settings. Now, in its initial state, it will not translate weird symbols and numbers into notes. If you wanted to do that, you have to go into the settings menu, go all the way down to map custom characters and do your own mappings. Many years ago, I did a video about me not sequencing apps inside AUM. And then a year after that, I changed my mind and I made an entire video about that. And a lot of people have seen that video and I'm so grateful that you all decided to watch it. Well, this video is a continuation of that series, me changing my mind about sequencing stuff in AUM. And it's when I find apps like the ones that Gem has made this stuff just becomes a little bit more fun to work with, especially when they're easy to use, easy to load, easy to get going. So I recommend you have a look at his library because in this video, I've only gone through what, five or six apps, but then there are another 15 apps. So yeah, go have a look at his library. I'm sure you'll find something that you like, something you wanna try out, and they're all worth the money you pay for them. I also want to take the opportunity here to say thank you to Jem Oljai for doing the interview with me. I also want to say thank you so much to all of my patrons who have been with me all these years supporting me financially and all of you who are not my patrons but you're still here, you're watching my videos, you're interacting with the comments, you're pressing the thumbs up. If you aren't, you should be doing that right now. My channel would not exist without my audience. I know that. So thank you, my beautiful beautiful audience. I have a bunch of links down there in the pinned comment, so if you want to go and check out any of Gem's apps, you'll be able to find them, especially the ones I talked about. You can also find some links to some videos that I mentioned earlier in this episode, and you'll also be able to find links to places where you can support me financially or just with a comment or something like that. Well, as usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it. I sing Moo Song Moo. You sing Moo Song too. I love Moo Song Moo. You love Moo Song too. Moo. I sing Moo Song Moo. Moo. You sing Moo Song too. I sing Moo Song Moo.